Rick Martin is the CEO of uh, Microgen DX, who's going to come and give a talk as to what uh, Microgen DX is. I've known Rick for five years, and uh, I was very impressed when I met him in the beginning. He's one of those refreshing CEOs that believes in evidence and studies. And as I said in the beginning of the talk, I believe in this technology enough that I actually invested in one of my, uh, some of my uh, uh, kids' college funds. So I hope uh, that Rick will be able to uh, help us out in the future. My kids want to go to college, by the way, Rick. So we'll have Rick give a talk and uh, explain about what Microgen DX is. Thank you, Jay. Uh, thanks, everybody out there for taking the time on a Saturday to, to uh, uh, listen to the presentations and to uh, give us your input and feedback. Um, it's very important to us. Um, I, I know, you know, as I said, this is not a, uh, there's no perfect diagnostic tool and, um, and, and next gen sequencing is not a perfect diagnostic tool and we have a lot to learn yet. And we still have a lot to do in terms of helping show its clinical utility. Um, but you're also going to face, you know, significant opposition within your hospitals as we've learned over the years. And I wanted to take the time just to give you some background, um, maybe some potentially some ammunition to use in your discussions with your with your hospital lab directors, your microbiology departments, and so forth. Because, again, uh, we found that uh, uh, physicians get excited about the opportunity to use us, but then get tremendous pushback in their institutions because of the resistance to change and the lack of knowledge and understanding of what it is that we do. Um, now that I could just figure out how to advance these slides on here. Okay, Karan, how do I? Oh, I did that in the morning. Okay. <laughs> um, so the lab's based in Lubbock, Texas. Um, we have over 260 employees, our headquarters in Orlando, and we have started to put out satellite labs around the country, mainly because of the uh, COVID testing. Um, and we also partner with a lot of large practices in urology where we help bring in the technology into their labs. Um, we're a high complexity lab. Uh, we're governed under CAP and CLIA. Um, our, the founder is Dr. Walcott, who was, uh, worked with Bill Costerton many years ago, and Bill Costerton opened Randy's eyes to the clinical utility of, of, of molecular uh, technology for identification of microbes. Uh, we've been doing this longer than I think any lab in the nation uh, since 2008. Um, we have processed more than 500,000 uh, next-gen sequencing. I've actually done more than 700,000 on, on COVID. Um, you know, one of our strong areas in terms of since our high volume allows us to have one of the best curated libraries of sequence codes with more than 50,000. Um, and I, as much as, you know, the industry would like me to price this much higher, I saw, you know, Carius on the chat, you know, Carius is another sequencing lab that's um, only validated for, for blood um, and they charge over $2,000 a sample. Um, we've priced this at uh, you know less than three hundred dollars, and uh, the reason why we've done that is because, uh, frankly, I don't want to have patients get invoice for thousands of dollars for this technology. And we can do it because we have the the volume to be able to bring the cost down significantly. Um, and we also have our our research side, which is our RTL uh, labs, uh, which is, uh, the labs have been together for more than ten years. Um, so again, we've over time we've we've changed our platforms. You know, I call them essentially the box that you use, whether it's an Illumina or a Roche or a Nanopore. We use all of them. We use we have Pack Bio for long read sequencing, um, and they've improved over the years. And the cost point has also come down significantly, and the timing has come down. I'm not going to go into a lot of issues around uh, the whole issue around contaminants, but I can t essentially tell you, and, and Nick is, can always address this, is that. We've learned over the years and we have put in a lot of controls uh, to make sure that we're looking at any potential contaminants that are coming from reagents, for example. So we have a high level of confidence that what we report out is exactly what came from the sample. Um, we, we've done a lot of, of, of major clinical trials um, across the country. Um, we have more than 12 going right now in urology, ENT, 
um, spine, orthopedics. Um, and so we're constantly, as Jay said, uh, we're producing more evidence because I've been in medicine for more than 30 years and learned over the years, primarily in sales, that if you don't have good science and good evidence, you're going to have a, a hard time, you know, presenting your case. Um, and to give you confidence that we know what we're doing, um, not only have we been doing it a long time, um, but we partnered with some of the top organizations. Uh, the CDC has been using us for more than 10 years uh, and still are using us for contracts. So we're constantly running samples for the CDC. Um, the FDA biofilm division used us recently when patients were dying from contaminated endoscopes and they had were tasked by Congress to find a better way of sterilizing these endoscopes. We work with uh, three major universities and, and new sterilization techniques and, we, and the FDA biofilm division used us to determine if these sterilization techniques were actually working. Uh, we've done large contracts with the military. Uh, we're kind of proud of the work we've done with, with NASA. We did uh, work with them on the Mars rover and we published studies looking at the microbiome of the International Space Station. So my point is that, you know, for many years, um, when science has wanted to have sequencing done, uh, we were the go-to lab and still are for many major corporations and for many universities, uh, not only in the U.S., but worldwide. Uh, we've, as, as Jay has said, you know, I'm not afraid to, to get behind the research. I'm more than happy to work with any of you out there in terms of ideas you have about proving the clinical utility of this. So we have more than 35 published studies. We, I think, have more than almost any, any lab in this space. Um, and again, we're going to continue to do that. Um, we talked about a lot about the next-gen sequencing and the issue that Karan pointed out that it doesn't give you the resistant genes for the antimicrobials. For many years, we got hit pretty hard on that. This, you, physicians would say, I need my phenotypic sensitivities. I need to know that. That's fine if you can get it to grow. Um, but one thing we've added over the last couple of years is PCR primers for all of the resistant genes, or all 17 resistant genes right now. So we can tell you if the patient has carbapenem resistance, quinolone resistance, beta-lactam, and so forth. So that's one of the first tests we'll run and get that, get that information out to you the next day. And then we'll move to the next-gen sequencing platform. Um, in terms of credibility, again, if you're talking to your lab directors, um, and your microbiologists, one thing that hopefully will impress them is our CAP proficiency results for more than 10 years. Uh, CAP comes in and basically with a sample that we have to identify. Uh, we can't miss it. If we do, they basically can shut us down. So we have a 99.2% accuracy and have test blind samples of over 1,000. Orthopedics, as much as we put a lot of effort and studies and research into this, um, our, it's not our primary business where our primary largest sample volume comes from urology and it's not just the acute UTIs, it's the women with chronic reoccurring urinary tract infections that uh, they have had multiple cultures, they've been on antibiotics and they're just simply still not, not uh, feeling well. So we have helped thousands of patients across the, the spectrum in terms of from ENT with chronic sinus infections to urology. Um, and so we're, we have broad usage across and this is one of the advantages we have that we're validated across so many different sample types so that it doesn't matter whether you're sending us a heart valve or tissue or fluid, we've done all the validation work for numerous different sample types. Um, in terms of, uh, again, you're going to get pushback from your institutions, whether they want to send to University of Washington or Mayo. Um, we have at the largest range of validations. Our turnaround time is faster and our cost is much, is much less. I often meet with uh, research centers and that are doing sequencing and they look at me in disbelief when I tell them our price point. They look at me and say, that's not possible. How can you do that? Well, it is possible um, if you're not greedy and if you have large sample volume, um, you can bring the cost down significantly and, and, and we do that. Um, last thing I just want to talk about is that, you know, there's questions about you know, sampling and, and the Duke study. And I just want to say that um, we can only detect what you send us. Um, so sampling is critical. We showed you the video and proper sampling techniques. Um, but frankly, if you looked at the Duke study, they did not follow our protocol. There were a lot of samples that came in with just one sample or two samples. Uh, we asked you to send multiple samples, uh, maximizing surface area collection. Tissue, it's not uncommon for the first sample to come in to be a big chunk of tissue, which is what you're used to sending to the micro lab. 
That's not a good sample for us. That's a lot of host DNA in that tissue. Um, so we need pea size and we need you to maximize the surface area, fluid. And again, we're not charging you for every sample. The more samples you can send us, the better that the probability that we're gonna get a good yield. Um, so um, again, uh, please do everything you can to uh, uh, give us enough samples to work with um, and we'll have the best opportunity to give you a good uh, yield, a good detection, a good report. So with that, I will end it and uh, if there are any questions, but uh, happy to respond but again, thank you. Uh, I hope that uh, we've given you some information that will help you, help your patients. Um, if you're still skeptical, I understand. Tell me what else we need to do. I'm already hear that. And any help you need with your institution, we'll also be happy to do that too. So thank you. Thank you very much, Rick. And thank you all of you. We're coming to the end. So we've got a few minutes for discussions. Feel free to send questions.